Hey there, welcome back. Now in the previous lecture, we discussed about serializer as well as views. Now in this lecture, let us start our journey with practical implementation. The first thing is I'm going to close this view because we are not going to utilize it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder inside my app and I'm going to store all the required file like URLs, like views, and in future we are going to create file like permission, throttling or anything else that will be inside our API folder. So what I'm going to do is right click here, create a new folder, call it API. And I'm going to create all type of files except model, all type of files I'm going to create inside it. So for now, let me create views.py and I'm also going to create urls.py so these two will be required for now uh, let me close this settings and i also need to just copy this one since i'm not going to utilize this url i'm going to paste it here save this one and close this one for now just jump on to my main url and here i need to change information it will be a uh, watch list underscore app then I'm going to get inside my app API folder, which is api.urls. So I'm going to get inside this folder, then API folder, and inside that we have this URL folder. Okay, once I get here, I have this list, and then I have these two views, which I need to change. So instead of my watch list underscore app, then I need to use api.views. So all the views will be inside this particular folder. So if I jump here, I need to add all my views content here. Uh, let me close this one. Let me close this admin.py. Remember we need to change uh, models a lot. It will be here. I don't need this urls.py now. I can delete this one. And also I'm not going to use this views. I can comment all of this. Later you can access this file and see all the code, but I'm not going to utilize it. So everything we are going to do right now is inside this API folder. Uh, let me close this one. And we have these two view names. Okay, let me get back here. The first thing I'm going to do is I need to start writing views. So it's simple. The first thing, let me import my models. So from I just need to import it from my watch list underscore app. Then I need to just select my models and here I need to import. So I have a model name movie. I need to import movie. So this is going to be my first import. And as usual, I just need to write a simple class. So for now, I'm just writing a class to access the complete list about my movies. I'm going to call it as movie list like previous. And then inside this, I'm going to take request. Everything is exactly the same way that we have done till now, but content will be changed inside here. Now this is the first step. Remember I talked about serialization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file called as serializer.py. And I'm going to create this inside my API folder. Let me call this as serializers.py take care of this name now serializer is important because we are going to map all the values step by step so if we are going to work with different model files we are going to map each values step by step in our serializer itself so later on we don't have to map them here so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to import serializer from rest framework so all you have to do is use rest framework and you need to import serializer. Make sure to check spellings again and again because you are going to get error. Definitely you are going to get error regarding these spellings. That's it. Now let me write a serializer class. So all you have to do is use class and then here if my model name is a movie, my serializer name will be movie serializer. Cool. So this is my movie serializer here. I have imported my serializer class 
and inside that we have two classes as we have discussed either serializers and then we have model serializer. So first let us start our journey with serializer. So all I have to do is use serializer. That's it. Now here we need to map each individual element. So we are going to have ID. Uh, wait a second, I need to write things here, but for now just take ID. Then we are going to have a name description as well as active. So it will be name. I need to add information about name itself. Then we have description and then we have active. Now if you have worked with form, there are chances you might have worked with each individual elements in form also. Same thing we have to do with serializer. All we have to do is just describe about this particular field. So id is going to be an integer field. All I have to do is use integer here. And this is going to be a read only field. That means I'm not going to edit id. If I'm fetching any data, if I'm creating it, it will be automatic and I'm not going to edit anything related to id. So I'm going to use it read only as true. The next thing is about our name and it is going to be a character field. But this is not read only so I need to write it. That's it. Description is also going to be a character field and then we are going to have active. Now this active is going to be a boolean field. Uh, make sure you remove this. Read only means we are not going to edit anything. It's just going to be accessed by us, nothing else. Now that's it. So you have created a serializer that is going to map all the values. Now we are going to do a lot of thing inside this. We can add validation. We can add methods regarding create, update, and we can do a lot of things here. Step by step, we will understand about it. So that was our first process about serializer. So that means once we get this data, instead of doing this, we can just use serializer and inside our serializer, everything will be mapped automatically. And then we just need to return JSON response, right? Yeah, something like this. So let me get back here. First, let me get my complex data. So I'm going to use movie. And here I need to select movie object and then I'm going to get all. So since this is a movie list, I'm going to select all the objects. Now the next thing is I'm going to utilize serializer. So I need to create a variable to store all the data. I'm going to call it as serializer. You can call it anything, but I'm going to call it as serializer. And here what I need to do is I need to utilize my movie serializer and then I need to pass my complex data, which is movies. And I also need to import this. So what I'm going to do is from uh, my watch list, uh, it's going to be API dot serializer. I'm going to import movie serializer. So I'm going to import from this directory. I'm going to import movie serializer. That's it. The first task is done. Now all I have to do is I just need to return this response. So I'm going to use response and I need to just use serializer dot data. Now if you try to print this serializer, it is also going to be a object. So to access all the information, we need to use dot data. This looks fine. You can see we don't need to map anything. You can see we don't need to convert anything right now. Everything is done with the help of this serializer. This is the basic step. I also need to import this response. So what I'm going to do is jump on the top and I need to select a rest framework here and go into response import response. So now I have access to this response. Uh, this looks fine. Jump on to my URLs. We have this list. I need to run my server. I did some mistake. There is no module name. I missed an S. Jump here. Add a S here. I just hope you realize how I'm solving these error. So once that is done, I'm going to get an error again. Uh, yeah, so we have created this uh, URL again. And currently we don't have any movie details. 
So let me create another class and I'm going to call it as movie underscore details. It is going to accept a request and also it is going to accept a PK. Once that is done, we are going to utilize our movie variable and we are going to store everything for a single object only. So I'm going to utilize get where my PK is equals to PK. That means I'm accessing this primary key, which is this and I'm passing this to PK. Once that is done, I also need to create a serializer. Going to select this movie serializer. I'm going to pass this object. And then all I have to do is just return a response. This looks fine. I hope you got the idea. But there are still tons of things because we haven't created views like we discussed in the earlier lecture. We haven't used add the rate decorator, something like this that we discussed earlier. But let's see what type of error we get or if we are going to get any error or not. So our server is running. Let me visit this particular port. If I try to access one, I'm going to get an error. Jump back here. And if you see, I have a error regarding accepted underscore renderer, not set on response. So what is this and how we are going to get this? So the thing is, if you search on Google, we haven't added any condition to view. We haven't added any decorator to view. We haven't given what type of get request we need to get, what type of post request we need to get. So we haven't informed anything. We need to fix that first. Now what I mean by that, if you jump onto this Django REST framework website, go to API guide, click on this views. And here we are going to utilize the current ways API view because we are using function based views. Now what Django REST framework do is they provide this API view decorator by which we can describe what type of request we need to accept. That means there are four or five type of common request. The first one is get, the second one is post, then we have put, then we have delete and you will see a lot more once you start working on it. These are the four common ones that is get, post, put and delete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working with API view and here you don't need to mention like this. All you can do is just start using API view by default. It is set to get. So all I have to do is first import it. Let me copy this one. Remember, go to API guide, go to views, click on this function based views. You will have option about API underscore view and copy this one. Let me jump onto my VS code at the top. I am going to import it. Now we have access to this view. All I have to do is use this at the rate and this API view. So if I jump back to my DRF documentation once at this point of time, we are just accepting this get request by default. This is for get request, but maybe we need to add post request. We need to add a put request. All we have to do is just add a comma and then keep adding all the type of requests that we need to follow. Currently, we are just accepting a get request. Now, if you don't know what is get, what is post, what is put and what is delete, get means that we are just delivering the data. That means if a client sends a post request, that means they are sending some data and we need to store that data in our database. Put request means we are going to update some data then we have delete that means we are going to delete some data i will be talking about them in detail in the next lecture when we start working with different type of request let me save this one for now and let me jump onto our browser again try to access this information now here you see this different type of view and this is our response so we selected the first item and this is our response let me try to access list here. And again, I'm going to get an error. Now the error is pretty basic. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a homework. If you're watching this lecture till now, and if you have implemented everything till now, what you need to do is you need to search about this, why this error is coming. Pause this lecture right now and search about this error right now and see why it is coming. It will give you a good read about serialization for sure. 
So the thing is when we have multiple objects, we need to define many equals to true. What I mean by this, that means our serializer need to visit multiple objects in our query set. Here if you see I selected only single query set. That's why we don't need to add many equals to true. But when I have multiple objects, if you remember I have two or three or five films, our serializer need to visit each element and then map it. So here we need to define many equals to true. Once that is done, if I jump here, refresh this one, you can see I'm able to access all the content regarding my movie list. Now here you might see this type of interface uh, instead of this. So usually any type of API response look like this JSON, but we are getting a response like this. Why? Because of Django REST framework. So Django REST framework has this browsable API and what I mean by browsable API, you can see you have a proper response. You have more information about what is our status code, which is 200. Okay. We'll be talking about this later again. What type of methods are allowed? Only get method is allowed. And if I need a JSON response, I can select that. So this is pretty important. Now, once we have post request, put request, you will also see a form here to send a post request or put request. So this is something important with Django race framework, which is this browsable API. Now, if I try to access a different element, which is one, I'm able to access this. Let's try two. I'm able to access this. So that's how we are going to work. This is pretty basic. Now the main motive of this lecture was to make you understand about serialization as well as this API view. That's it. I hope you got the idea. Let me do a quick revision. So earlier we had this type of view where we use this complex data, converted this and then sent a response. But now what we did is we created a serializer which handles everything regarding this conversion. And all we have to do is select the complex data, pass this data to our serializer. If we are going to have multiple objects, then we need to pass this many equals to true then just use serializer and dot data and send a response. Now this view need information. If we are going to get a get request, post request, put request or delete request. So for that, we are going to utilize API underscore view, which is a decorator. And we can utilize this through our API guide. Now in the next lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk more about this serializer as well as this view and try to expand our project. Till this point of time, we did pretty basic. We just understood how to start things. Now in the next lecture, let us try to add more requests here. That means get post, delete, put and try to expand our serializer. Try to talk more about this. I hope this lecture was helpful. Now you have basic idea about what we are doing. From the next lecture, let us continue our journey with views as well as serializer. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one.